You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast. We're so excited that you're tuning in. I'm just going to pray real quick. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Father God, um, for the, the life principles that we have in your word, Lord God. And through these manuals, we're so grateful, Lord, in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. So i um, still teaching out of the soon-to-be-published volume three of the Counseling Manual. I'm going to be talking, I'm still in that back third of the book, Living the Single Life, um, and this particular chapter is Believing God for a Mate. Now before you say, oh, I've already got myself a, an excellent spouse, an excellent mate, I'm already engaged, whatever, you know, that's great, um, but still, uh, th these are really good practices to, to know, to be aware of, especially because this is a counseling manual. Um, as counselors, if you're in a counseling position at your church, whether you're maybe pastoral leadership staff, you're in that advisory role, anybody who gives advice, even good friends, should be aware of these principles. You know, we did talk about iron sharpens iron recently, because how can you be a good friend if you don't give good godly advice? If you have a single friend um, that is, you know, wanting to, to start that road down to, you know, getting married, believing God for a mate, you know, whatever stage of life somebody is in, there's always an opportunity to help that person believe God for the right person. You know, or say you're helping somebody through the healing process of divorce and, and you know, they've already dealt with everything. They've, you know, gone through that whole process and it is a process to go through divorce. You know, I, I, I've unfortunately had to go through that myself and there is a, in this manual, there's a whole section about that. But, you know, now it's been some time and, you know, now that person is ready for a second chance at marriage. And so these are really good, you know, guiding principles this is a springboard really for that person to to ask themselves these you know pointed questions you know when it comes to identifying someone as a potential mate i also think this is a great chapter for parents to really be familiar with you know the especially if you're a parent of preteens teenagers young adults because young people are so impressionable. I mean, I think it, a lot of people are impressionable, whether, you know, young or, or older, but young people especially are impressionable. And if they're learning about relationships and how to date through TV, movies, you know, social media, my goodness, or maybe their other friends who, who may or may not be Christians, then chances are they're getting a very worldly view of how to select a mate, how to how, how to go through that process. Um, you know, it, it, there's also going to be a false sense of, of reality. I mean, when I was a, when I was a preteen, you know, I thought I was going to find love like they do in John Hughes movies, you know, and <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I, I've kind of dated myself, but that's okay. You know, if you know the reference about John Hughes movies, you know, well, first of all, you and I can be friends, but uh, secondly, no, I'm just teasing. Uh, well, we, we could be friends, but anyway, but most importantly, you know, that's the kind of false sense of reality that I'm talking about. You know, if you watch, you know, certain movies and, and you think, oh, it's going to be just like that. I'm going to find my Prince Charming. No, <laughs> it's not going to be like that. So, and, and also those movies are, are really geared toward young people. And I'm not saying that those movies are bad. I'm not knocking, you know, whether it be John Hughes movies or, or those kind of movies, you know, back from the 80s. You know, I still watch them to this day, as a matter of fact. So I'm not saying that they're terrible. But as an adult now, I understand that that isn't reality. But when you're 11, it's, you, you think that's how, that's how life and love is, is going to be. But really the important thing is we want to teach our kids, you know, we want to set them up for success and we want to teach them the importance of what to look for when choosing a mate, when choosing someone that they could potentially date and then have that lifelong relationship commitment with. You know, we want them to, we want to help people 
you know, young people obviously, but we want to help people distinguish what true love is versus the feelings, you know, the, the puppy love, what pastor calls Twitter patient. You know, we want to teach people what to avoid. Um, and, and of course, you know, we just want everybody to be, you know, really honest with themselves when it comes to believing God for a mate. And, um, you know, because we want our, 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 we want everybody to be set up for success, like I said, and experience true happiness in relationships the way God intended. So these, what I'm going to talk about now is things to know before dating, okay? Before dating. You're not even dating someone yet. You're just looking kind of you know, if there's someone that, that, you, that you're around quite a bit and you, you think possibly they could be a, 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 a good mate for you, these are some, some things to, to kind of ask yourself to be aware of. You know, um, you don't want to rush into things with, when it comes to, you know, relationships because in, in today's society, there isn't enough thought that goes into going into a relationship with somebody. And, you know, people often rush into relationships because they're feeling are getting the best of them you know they're drawn to someone who's attractive someone who who's you know got there they have a lot of fun they're, they, they're very charismatic and so you're you know you're you're just immediately drawn to that person and you start a relationship with, with that person but the problem is you haven't gotten to know what's underneath all that um, that outward appearance you haven't gotten to know what's underneath all that fun and charisma um, so one of the first things <clears throat> that we should be mindful of, especially as Christians, is, is like-minded goals and beliefs. You know, ev even within Christianity, there are, this is something that pastor is saying, there are, there are many uh, camps, I'm using the word camps, there are many camps of Christianity out there and they do not all hold the same convictions. For example, um, some Christians believe in miracles, they believe in divine healing, they believe in, in, in biblical prosperity, uh, speaking in tongues, and so on. And then there are other Christians who struggle with those teachings and, and, and you know, just flat out oppose those teachings, but they're still Christians. They're still saved. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, one is better than the other, but they're definitely those different camps of Christianity, uh, so to speak. So it's important to to understand um, what how compatible you are going to be with a fellow Christian because the more compatible you are the happier you obviously will be and of course the less compatible you are you know down the road there is a greater potential for unhappiness and you don't want to get too far into a relationship and realize uh oh um, this person doesn't believe the same things I believe even though we both go to church because um, that, you know, e even the difference of biblical prosperity and, you know, cause some people, some Christians don't think that it's, it's, it's God's will that you prosper, you know, uh, abundantly, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, he is the God of more than enough, but some people don't think that you should be prospering that way and some do. So even that difference can really alter a relationship. So just make sure that when you're looking for a, when you're looking at a potential mate, make sure that they have the same ideas, the same beliefs as a Christian that you have. Because we wanna make sure that, that you know, when, when it comes to fellowship, we've got fellowship with the right kind of person. Um, that's the main thing that you, that you, you really wanna look for. Relationship is not fellowship. <clears throat> you know, just because you're born into a family, it doesn't mean that you have fellowship with those family members. It, it just means that you're related. That's, that's really, you know, what, what it means. Um, you know, we all have, you know, you're born into a family, but yet you may have nothing in common with family members and never desire to spend time together. I mean, I, I, I think you can ask anybody um, on the face of the earth that, you know, if they have family that they either don't get along with, they don't want to spend time with necessarily because there's nothing in common. And I, I do have family members. It's not that I don't get along with them. I get along with just about everybody. But... My f there are family members that I have that I don't have fellowship with them because there's nothing in common. Um, you know, they're not of like faith. And so I, you know, I may see them around the holidays, but that's about it. I love them. There's no question that I love my family, no matter who it is. But there are some family members that I don't see, I haven't seen for probably over a decade. They're, you know, they live in another part of the country. And so I don't see them. I, you know, I don't go on Facebook and, and try to, 
you know, keep in contact with them, but I still love them because they're my family. However, there is no fellowship there. Um, fellowship is the I, fellowship is the Greek word in the Bible. It's 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 koinonia, and it comes from a Greek word koinos, which means common. The idea with fellowship is to have something in common. It means to have association, community, joint participation, partnership. And fellowship demands interaction. So when you're in a relationship with someone, there needs to be that fellowship, that interaction with someone, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a husband and a wife, or your family, you know, because you, you can have, obviously you will have family that, that you have that fellowship with. Um, and it's different from relationship. Obviously, my parents, I, I you know, I I, 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 I love spending time with, with my parents. There are some aunts and uncles that I love spending time with. I love very dearly. I'm very close to them. But then I have other aunts and uncles that I'm not as close with. So that's, that's just the difference between fellowship and relationship. But when you're believing God for a mate, you want to make sure that there is fellowship there because, again, fellowship demands interaction. You can't be in a relationship and be stranger. Well, you can be, but it's not ideal to be in a relationship, especially a marriage relationship, and be strangers and not have anything in common. Um, watch out for broken fellowship. That's something that, that Pastor here mentions. You know, people can be born again. They can be Christians, but literally have no fellowship with God. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we live in the light just as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. So something that you want to look look at when believing God for a mate, you know, as counselors, you, you want to make sure that you're, you know, asking people um, that you're counseling, you know, through this kind of situation, ask them, are, is that person that you're looking at as a potential mate, are they walking in the light? The, the light meaning the revealed truth of God's word. You know, when people are walking in that revelation uh, of, of God's word, their attitude is different. They act like, well, they act like Christians. <laughs> they act like, well, how, how should I say this? They, they act like Christians who, who know who they are in Christ Jesus, right? Amen. So when believing God for a mate, being in the word is, is uh, essential because that will show what their association with God is like. That will show if they have fellowship with God and not just say that, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I know who God is, but do they have fellowship with God truly? It's not enough for someone to say, oh, I'm spiritual, um, because that can be deceptive. You know, a lot of people think that um, when they say, oh, I'm spiritual, that means that they know God, but that's not the case. You know, they can be spiritual, but have no knowledge of God whatsoever. Spiritual, to, for someone to say, oh, I'm spiritual, it's sort of kind of a secular way of saying that you believe in a higher power. And whether you call that higher power God or just say, oh, the universe, you know, or, you know, some things just happen for a reason or whatever, you know, good things happen to good people. You know, when God opens a door or closes a door, he opens a window, that kind of thing. Those are just, you know, things that people say, but they're not really scriptural. Um, but that's that kind of spiritual, you know, uh, attitude that people have when they say that they are spiritual. But yet you can tell that they don't really have that fellowship with God. They don't have they don't have that understanding of who God is really. And it's important to point that out if you're helping someone believe God for a mate. You know, help them realize where they are in their Christian walk and where that potential mate is in their Christian walk. So the counselor must help that individual recognize and identify that in another person that they might be, you know, saying, you know, this person could be a, a potential mate. Another thing to look for, and this is very important, I mean, everything is important, right? But this, this is important when you're believing God for a mate. Do they have a job? <laughs> Um, and, you know, I could say, oh, ladies, you know, make sure that, you know, you're, you're, you're the guy, he has a job, you know, because he's going to be the, the provider of your family. But, you know, I think this, this is very important for both the, the men and the woman to have a job, especially as you, as you get older. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm definitely, you know, I'm not a teenager. I'm not in my 20s anymore. So I need to have a job so that I can support myself. And I, I, I'm, there's an element of independence in, in me, but I'm dependent on God. But I 
have a job. I have that element of responsibility. And so I think it's important that both of you have a job because you both understand, you'll understand that kind of responsibility of taking care of things. Because the first thing that God gave man was a job when he was in the Garden of Eden. He was to dress and keep the garden. And these things were given to him before God gave him a wife. In Genesis 2.15 it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Uh, the, f the words or the phrase to dress means to labor and to work and to keep means to have charge of, to protect, to keep your eyes on and that just speaks of responsibility. And you know, I'm not saying that a woman can't, you know, after, you know, once, once y'all get married, it's okay if the woman doesn't work because she may have to now tend to the house. There might be kids to take care of if, if you're all a starting a family, but if she has that that understanding of responsibility she is going to keep that house like nobody's business um, so that's I mean that's just my personal um, you know I, I think it's important that both of you have a job when when you're when you're believing God for a mate don't just look to the husband don't, don't ladies don't just look to the man to be the one that has a job and think oh you know once we're married I'm just gonna sit home and eat bonbons all day and he's gonna take care of me you have to take care of each other really is is what it boils down to so if you have that level of responsibility going into you know the the dating process and eventually going into going into marriage you'll you'll know what it what it means to to keep a house to to get your bills paid and make sure that all those things are you know in line with with your household you know because you can't live on love um, as, as wonderful as that sounds I mean, obviously you love each other with the love of God but you need you need more than that um, so <laughs> anyway do they have a job? The next thing is, what is their love walk like? In other words, do they love God? Um, are they holding any kind of resentment toward people? Do they love the brethren? And I, I think it's wonderful how Pastor points this out because I don't know if it's something that we really look at, you know, when looking at a potential mate. You know, I mean, obviously we want them to love God, but do they love people? Um, because if you don't love people, that that could create a problem. <laughs> um, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to be with someone who loves people, who gets along with others, not someone who has a short fuse and is easily angered and offended by people. Um, you know, especially you know your your brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't want to be in a relationship with Oscar the Grouch. You want to be with someone who has that. You know you know, even temperament, that person who loves God and, you know, knows how to walk in love. Um, because if they can't love people, if they can't love their brothers and sisters in Christ who they can see, then how are they really going to love God who they cannot see? That's what Pastor said. I, I thought that was just like, psh, wow, revelation. Loving God and His people, it will always consist of forgiving, repenting. Um, so if a person is turned off by another, and, and it keeps them from truly forgiving, then that's a flaw in their character. And we talked about character extensively when we were going through the Iron Sharpens Iron chapter. So, um, yeah, just make sure that, you know, when you're looking at somebody, make sure that they have a good love walk, you know. Um, other questions to ask yourself, um, or for the counselor to ask, uh, when you know when someone's believing God for a mate friends if you have a friend who's saying you know hmm, I think I think that person could potentially be someone I could start dating you know well go through this you know list of additional questions do they do the word you know uh, that just brings to mind the, the the sponge test you know pastor talks about um, you know when, when you when you wet a sponge and you squeeze it water comes out right but when someone is is under pressure under stress and you know they're being squeezed by the pressures of life what comes out of them does the word come out of them you know what does that person do what what you know what what's their do they do the word and I'm not saying that they have to do the word all the time because we're all developing and growing in faith and in this walk uh, of this Christian walk but you know is there do they eventually get on that road and and do the word you know no one's perfect but there is that maturity, that level of, hey, I'm gonna do the word here, you know. Um, do they hold fast to their commitments? You know, are you, are you um, 
have you noticed that maybe somebody there they commit to do things they say yeah I'll do this yeah I'll meet you here yeah I'll, I'll drive you to the airport or yeah you know we'll, we'll go to dinner but then for some reason habitually they at the last minute they just kind of find a way to get out of things you know that's just someone who's kind of flaky and they're not committed they're not keeping their word because the thing is if they're not keeping their word if they're not keeping their commitments in in these areas are they going to keep their commitment to you Mm. because marriage is a lifelong commitment uh, are they committed to their church you know and, and I'm not saying that they have to necessarily serve in the church but do they do they go to church as, as often as they can when 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 the doors are open um, you know or are they looking for reasons to get out of church and I understand things come up you know there's you know there's a vacation there's you know um, you know you're not feeling well or you know there's other you know, like kids activities where you know a, a parent has to you know do that I'm just you know um, but is someone you know waking up on Sunday morning and being like oh I don't feel like going to church Again, that just speaks of commitment. So, you know, are they committed to their church? I believe that if someone is truly committed to their church and, and wanting to, to grow spiritually, to learn about the things of God and to learn really, you know, what faith is, what, what the Bible says about living a Christian walk, then I think the serving part will eventually come. Um, that's, just, that's just me. I, know, I mean, that's how it happened with me anyway. But the... the but the thing, it goes back to fellowship, because if they're not committed to their church, if they're not taking their relationship with God seriously, then they aren't taking their fellowship with God seriously. And again, it goes back to fellowship. Um, another question, do they pay their tithes? Uh, you know, because that will hinder their prosperity for sure. It will hinder your prosperity if you end up going into a relationship with that person, you know? Um, you know, are they the kind of person that when the the collection plate comes up, they just kind of fish a dollar out of their pocket or their purse and throw it in? You know, um, if, if that's the case, then they're n not paying their tithes. So you want to make sure that if you're believing God for a mate, that they're paying their tithes. Okay? Because, um, again, it, it's, and, and that goes back to that, you know, those different, you know, camps of Christianity, because uh, not all Christians pay their tithes, Right? So um, it just, it comes full circle. The last section that we're going to, to discuss is uh, the voice of the spirit, faith and selecting a mate. So, you know, when, when you're looking at a potential mate, do, do, do they have an understanding of spiritual truths? In other words, do they have a heart life? Because the spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to our inward man, to our spirit. And that's contained within the confines of our heart. So does that person know the voice of the spirit? Can they be led? you know, by spiritual things, or are they just constantly kind of giving in and being led by their feelings, their whims, their desires, you know, flying by the seat of their pants kind of kind of situation, you know, so to speak, because there have been some charismatic blunders uh, that have happened in the body of Christ. And so we don't want to let that happen. We want to make sure that when we're looking at a potential mate that, you know, especially if, if we're of that same spiritual understanding that that person is also of that same spiritual understanding you know and, and also it's one thing to learn from those you know charismatic blunders like what, what pastor says it's it's one thing to learn from those mistakes and and desire to know how to be led by the spirit and really want that development and that growth it's another thing to be ignorant and constantly you know being led by your emotions because God is a spirit and he speaks to our spirit he doesn't speak to our emotions or our feelings and and along that same line you know desiring someone is okay uh, if they feel the same way that you do. And we, we talked about that last week, you know, the risk of male and female friendships. Um, you know, eventually, if, you're, if, if you, know, you don't want to have very close, intimate friendships with someone of the opposite sex because it is inevitable that one of you will want something more out of the relationship where the other person just wants to be friends. Um, but once it's established that, you know, the, the man and the woman they, they, they've answered those questions. They're uh, the ones that we've just discussed. You know, that, that, that's all going to be established while you're believing God for a mate. And, and, and once you've established all those things, then it's okay to go to that next step of dating. Because again, we have n we're not talking about dating yet. This is everything that you have to identify or help a person identify if you're counseling them or giving them advice um, before 
the dating even starts. And on that note, um, I'm gonna stop there because next week we are gonna talk about dating and the different stages of dating. So we hope that you enjoyed this podcast. We love you, God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Ha, <laughs> ha,